So we're going to jump right into the geography of South Asia. So as you can see here on this map, everything in the green is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be splitting up our unit on Asia into three units. We've got South Asia here. Then we're actually going to touch on uh, Southeast Asia, uh, which is kind of this area down here. And then we're going to talk about East Asia. So we're going to break it up into three units. So make sure that you're also studying your map. Uh, on Asia, the links are in Satara. So right into the physical geography. Um, South Asia, um, also known as the Indian subcontinent, uh, as it does have its own um, continental plate. Okay, large triangular peninsula that juts into the Indian Ocean. Again, a peninsula is a body of land surrounded by water on three sides. Subcontinent is a larger land mass that's smaller than a continent. Amazing fact here, more than 20% of the world's population live on the South Asian Peninsula. 20% of the world lives on the South Asian Peninsula. That is incredible. Challenges in recent decades. High population growth. So again, this unit is going to talk uh, largely uh, about India, Myanmar, some of the, these neighboring countries uh, of, of India. So India is, is one of the most populated nations uh, in the world. Is This region is one of the most populated regions in the entire world. So with that, population growth has been a concern, overpopulation, increased stress with the environment, floods, monsoons, uh, Economic changes in recent years, modernizing gap means they're having a hard time keeping up uh, with the rest of the world. Conflict between India and Pakistan. Tectonic origin. Uh, India was actually, so back when, uh, you know, Pangaea uh, was around uh, millions and millions of years ago, uh, before continental drift happened, uh, India was actually part of the supercontinent of Greenwanaland. So 65 million years ago, the Indian plate broke away, forming an island. 40 million years ago, India and the Eurasian plates collided, forming mountains. Uh, as we'll see, like the Himalayas are, are part of that mountain range. Three major landform regions. The Himalayan mountain rim uh, is one of the largest mountain ranges in the world. We've got the Ingo Gangetic Plain. So again, a plain is a flat, um, grassy, fertile soil area. And then you've got the Deccan Plateau. Uh, again, a plateau is kind of like a, a flat, uh, kind of arid region uh, that's high, high above, high in elevation. The Himalayan Mountain Rim uh, is at the northern uh, kind of uh, border. It's kind of the border. If you remember last year when you talked about ancient India, uh, kind of the Himalayas are kind of the northern border of the ancient Indian uh, civilization. Uh, crosses Nepal, Bhutan, and northern portions of India and Pakistan. The Himalayas are the longest and highest mountain range. Mount Everest, which is the, the one of the most famous mountain peaks in the world, all the you know uh, really uh, enthusiastic mountain climbers want to go to Everest and climb it, is almost thirty thousand feet. People, of this mountainous region, live in the valleys of the Himalayas, so they live in the lower areas uh, where there's more vegetation and mild climate. Uh, to the west are the Kar I always have trouble pronouncing this word Karakoram Range, the world's second highest mountain range. Himalayas are the source of the major rivers of South Asia. So again, uh, this kind of goes uh, with runoff as, as it rains. Uh, you've got the runoff on the mountain that feeds into these tributaries of which form rivers. So you've got, they carry the sediments from the high points to the base of the mountain rim to form the Ingo Gangetic Plain. So that's why it's a fertile plain because they, the rivers carry that sediment down. And when it floods, uh, that silt uh, goes into that plain region creating fertile soil for agriculture. Uh, again, uh, kind of touching more on this plain area, uh, obviously um, it's more densely populated here, uh, despite the fact that, that there can be some severe uh, flooding. Uh, ma three major rivers cut through the region. You've got the Indus River. This is the lifeblood of the country. This is uh, the Indus River Valley is where the ancient Indian civilization uh, first established themselves. You got the Ganges River, uh, which is the largest uh, river uh, in India. Uh, 
fertile plain region where half of India's huge population lives. So this is, again, not only the largest river, but it's where most of the people, it's kind of more on the eastern side. It's called the Mother River and is sacred to Hindus. People uh, go there every year to bathe and they believe that it can cure uh, their illnesses. And then you've got the Brahmaputra River. Uh, meets with the Ganges River to form Bangladesh's low delta plain. So those are your three major uh, South Asian rivers. The Deccan Plateau uh, covers much of the southern two-thirds, right here. So here's your plateau. It's a high area um, of the Indian subcontinent. The western Ghats are steep, rugged hills that face the Arabian Sea over here. Okay, so the Western Ghats. So that's going to be an important term there. And then you got the Eastern Ghats over here, which are hills. So again, these aren't mountains. They're kind of a series of like rolling hills, hills that face the Bay of Bengal over here. Uh, it contains fertile soils in the younger portions, and Plateau also holds most of India's mineral resources. This is where mining takes place. Uh, different. Uh, climates, we're almost done with this uh, this topic here, um, different climates, uh, we've got uh, monsoon is actually one of uh, the biggest ones, a monsoon is like just a huge torrential rain, uh, but these are kind of, uh, again, just like, um, you know, other parts of, of the world, like in Africa, very diverse climate zones, you've got humid tropical, kind of rainforesty, monsoon type climate. You've got savanna, where you got like grassland, humid, subtropical, a little bit below a tropical. We've got a wet and a dry season. Highland climate, which is in the ghats, the hills. Desert, very dry. And then and you got your steppe as well. Okay, the monsoon seasonal wind system influences the region and climate. So this largely has to do with wind currents uh, bringing warm air. So we've actually got two monsoons. You've got the winter monsoon and you've got the summer monsoon. So the summer monsoon is warm winds. Uh, uh, coming from warm ocean currents, uh, and they bring heavy heavy rainfall. Uh, the winter monsoons are, are colder um, ocean currents, bringing colder air, um, bringing kind of a, a, a drier uh, season. Uh, the Thar Desert and the lower Indus Valley of Pakistan are not in the path of the wet monsoons. They get little rain and dust storms are common. So this is more of your, your dry, your 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 steppe slash arid region. And you've even got some tropical cyclones here, hurricane-like storms that produce strong winds on the high seas. All right, so that is everything for the physical chart.